thank our sponsors, Carolina Distance Learning and Proctor U. And I will turn it, there you go, Barb, it's 12.15 in California. I'll, I'll turn it over to Cindy, who can introduce our speakers at this OLC Live session. Hi, everyone. Again, thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to, to hear about this presentation and the title of it being OLC Live, Building Bridges to New Opportunities. Who doesn't want to learn about that, right? Um, I'm going to introduce John Stewart from University of Oklahoma as the moderator and lead presenter, and he can introduce the rest of the panel. Like was mentioned, we are going to be monitoring the chat for your questions, but also feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to speak. And then at the end of the session, we will give notice at about four minutes prior um, to the end with two minutes reserved for wrap up. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everybody. Um, so we started OLC Live a couple of years ago to try to bring everybody who couldn't make it to the conference into the conversations. And then obviously this year, it's, uh, it's a bit of a different situation. So OLC Live is more integrated than ever and uh, perhaps more necessary than ever, um, even in these, these weird times. Um, today, I'm really happy to bring you in for a conversation with the uh, chairs of the conference. Um, we have uh, Tina radler Pigle and Janet Smith, who are the chairs of OLC Innovate 20, and then Keegan Longwheeler and Kate Miffitt, who are the program chairs this year. And then we'll see if, um, if Taylor or Angela can join us from the engagement side as well. But I was really excited to hear about how this conference came together this year. Obviously, they are strange times and unique circumstances for bringing a conference together. And so I wanted to open with a question to maybe start with Janet and then kick it over to Tina afterwards of um, what are you excited about? What are the, the affordances of this, uh, this online format? And then how did, how did it all come together? Oh, you muted yourself at the last second. John, can you repeat the last, the end of that question? Yeah, just how, what are you excited about that's you know, sort of new and unique to this year? And then how did, uh, how did y'all manage to get it together sort of in time or, or bring it together now in June? <laughs> Um, so I think what we are um, most excited about when we first started planning the conference um, before it went to a, a virtual event, um, we got really excited about the the metaphor of the bridges and building bridges and and everything that that meant. And I can remember um, Maddie, who's a, a longtime OLC um, committee member and fr friend of OLC, um, she had all this just like deep research about the. Um, the societal and cultural meanings of bridges in Chicago and how they came to be. So um, we were really excited about the idea of how do we um, make our conference and the OLC community at large more inclusive and more diverse. Um, and I think that that's never been more important than we find ourselves in this moment for lots of reasons. So um, I think what I'm most excited about is just how much access this conference is now giving to folks. Um, when I, I had a couple of people from my workplace today say, yeah, I went to a session yesterday and there was 145 people in it. And I said, yeah, OLC gave this amazing package deal where your university could have unlimited you know, participants. And so now what used to be maybe a couple people from your institution were lucky enough to go, you can literally have hundreds, if not more, um, be able to attend so we're excited about that and as with all things OLC the uh, the way it all came together was a whole lot of um, really smart and dedicated folks coming together and saying yeah I can I can do this um, I, I can help in this area I'm good at this let me let me be of assistance so you know our steering committee um, shifted a little bit and in, in who was on it we added, I would say, probably more volunteers um, to pull this whole thing off. But yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> and you know, coming from the engagement side now and the the chair side, um, what are you excited about? What's the the difference that you see there? And then also, how are you engaging with what like four thousand registrants this year? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Janet really said it best about access and just there's just more people that can attend this event. I, I um, presented a session yesterday and I had, um, you know, 100 at any point there was maybe 150 people there and there are people from around the world in my session that I don't know would have been there had that this been a fully just on site conference. And so um, what I really appreciate about the engagement piece um, with this fully virtual conference at this point is that the work we do about our sessions and the, the virtual experience and the engagement is very intentional. It's purposeful. 
and it's um, meaningful because it has to be. We don't have another option. We don't have an audience. We didn't plan for a face-to-face -face audience and then say, oh yeah, we're also streaming the session. So let's, let's make sure we include these folks. Everybody is in the same kind of situation and, and engaging them. And that's actually really exciting, quite honestly. For myself, um, I have presented synchronously before, but it certainly, um, it added a different level of challenge for myself and um, forced me to rethink different tools that I wanted to use. And so um, I'm finding some ways to reach out to people individually to follow up with them, to answer questions from them. And just, I'm popping in and out of a lot of sessions just to check things out and see how they're going and to get ideas again as, as a new or an emerging um, synchronous presenter as well. So, um, I mean, certainly there's things that, that I miss. I always bring small trinkets with me to conferences and things like that, but I think I'd probably break the bank if I tried to send those out to everybody at this point. So, um, you know, I'll just have to find a, something else, a virtual trinket or something, but um, it's, it's been a great experience. Thank you for asking. Yeah, this is the first year in uh, four or five that I haven't gotten Tina swag. So uh, yeah, as you said, might have to mail that out. Um, Kate and, and Keegan, uh, I, I was wondering how did y'all originally think about the program uh, when we were still thinking about this as a live conference? And then what are the changes that you made to how you structured the program and the session types as we moved online? And I'll kick that over to Kate first. Sure, thank you. It's a really good question. Um, so one of the things we paid a lot of attention to um, were the session types and how do we promote interactivity and design the session types so that um, people who are submitting proposals had to be kind of really thoughtful about how they were going to engage the audience. And I think um, you know, it, it, it does require reimagining a, a lot of that face-to-face -face interaction for the online environment. Um, and especially with um, attendance being what it is, what it might have been like small group discussions in those um, conversations, not presentations, you know, how do you approximate that in an online environment? So I think the attention to format has been really critical. Um, and I'll see if Keegan want to add to that. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's it's really been interesting to see too how the shift kind of happened and like how those things kind of translated because, um, you know, we were, we're, we're blessed, right? Because we were able to lean on a whole group of people to make this transition very um, seamless. And I definitely want to include the the OLC folks in there too because they did a lot of the that last minute legwork to help us like, um, you know, do the, do the last, that last sprint. Um, so I think, you know, between, between the, um, the programming and all of those engagement pieces, um, yeah, Amy, thumbs up for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, all of those people together and all of those ideas together are now have brought us here to this place. One of the challenges that I could see this year, it's both an affordance and a challenge, is that we've got Keegan apparently working from the lawn uh, here at OU and, um, and me sitting in my backyard. But at the same time, a lot of people are attending sessions and then going, you know, back to work. They're, they're working on, you know, sort of normal stuff from their desks at home and then uh, attending three or four sessions a day. How are you all trying to sort of engage with people? How are you all trying to, to sort of keep in contact with people as we have, you know, more people than ever, but in these... Uh, these strange formats. I'll just leave that as an open question for whoever wants to tackle it. So I'll say I do. I think it is a, a unique challenge to this format where you can um, kind of pop in and pop out and you'll have access to um, recorded content for a year. So I think um, think, you know, having to be really mindful of how you protect your time and your calendar. And I think, you know, one of the, ch the challenges that's unique to this particular time is like all of the people who are also home with children. So I have a five and seven year old who they finished school last week. So not only am I trying to balance my normal work um, responsibilities with conference participation, but I'm also, you know, trying to keep two kiddos busy and happy. So, um, I think, you know, one strategy is to just be really um, deliberate about the sessions that you want to engage with and then engage in those fully. So protect, you know, block your calendar, you know, and, and try to connect with the people in that session and participate in conversations on Twitter um, and just, you know, be um, as present as you can be when you're, you're doing the conference. 
I, lo I like to think of it just as like, you know, Twitter chats versus Twitter slow chats. Like to me, that's in my mind kind of, kind of um, is, I don't know. That's the, that's the easy way for me to kind of think about engagement in rather than just an hour, you know, your full day of, you know, thoughts and, and um, different conversations and those kinds of things. I've been finding it easier to um, actually connect with my colleagues that normally I would be in an office working with um, since we have quite a few Slack channels going within our office. Just say, hey, I am about to pop into a session that's on, um, was it yesterday? It was uh, engagement and engineering classes, something like that. And, uh, and I, and I tagged a couple people on Slack that I know, you know, work in those programs in our office and was like, Hey, you should check this out. And was able to just drop them the link. Like OLC made it really easy to be able to share links, add it to my calendar, um, to what Kate said about protecting that time. I actually, um, about a month ago, I, I blocked out these two weeks so that people would not overlay tons of meetings that, you know, from work that maybe could wait so that I would have the option of engaging here first and just saying, you know, this matters to me. This is my professional development time. Um, obviously, I can't spend 40 hours a week for two weeks doing it, but I can cut down on maybe some of those other um, meetings and in my case so that I can focus and again to what Kate said because the um, you know the zoom fatigue is is real um, and for a lot of us that have been on the front lines of remote teaching um, at our institutions you know you've been working crazy crazy days and uh, been in a lot of meetings so Yeah, I was just going to echo. We had the same experience in my office. Is um, we have the we have Slack conversations going on all the time, and uh, pointing people to sessions that are going on, and then also, yeah, as as y'all were saying earlier, able to get um, people that haven't normally been able to come to OLC uh, engaged, just because it is both less expensive on the registration side, and then also obviously on the travel side this year, and so uh, travel budgets stretch a lot farther when there's <laughs> when there's fewer things to go to, and you're not actually going to them. Um, what uh what was the decision or how was the decision made to um spread out the conference over two weeks uh normally olc if you're a first time uh, attendee normally olc lasts three or four days um and we have you know something like six to ten sessions going at any time so what was the conversation to make it more like two uh sessions that run concurrently and to stretch it over you know 10 or 12 days I'm actually not sure that any of us know the answer <laughs> to I that know the one. Answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Keegan. Oh, Christine, you're here. You know the okay. answer. You. I. I, I literally I, have two minutes until I have to start my next session, and this is exactly the reason why. Hi, everybody. I'm Christine Hinkley. I'm the senior director of conferences and events for OLC. So the reason it's over two weeks, and we're debating even for the fall what to do because our original plan was to do everything, both the virtual and the on-site in one week. And now I'm like, yeah, we need to do that one over two weeks, mainly because just the sheer volume of work it takes to put on a virtual conference. You know, we have uh, three to four rooms running all the time, 12 hours a day practically. Um, you have to have people to man the Zoom room, people to do the session chairs, people to coordinate all the, you know, login issues you guys have seen. And some of you have experienced, we're trying a new, uh, we're doing a beta test with a delivery system and, and there's been some hiccups with that. So it takes a huge team to do this. And um, yeah, that's the whole reason because there was just no way we could run 16 rooms at once. <laughs> so that was kind of the reason. And we also figured, especially with this being over the summer and people you know, needing, their jobs are interfering, their families, you know, you have family obligations. They, people, we figured people would be dropping in and out during those two weeks. And that's another reason why we have the recordings for one year post event so that you can go back. You could literally go back and watch every single session if you wanted to. It might take you one a day, but you could do it. <laughs> so that's why. Yeah, it's one of the pieces I'm most excited about is being able to attend. And, you know, normally you can only attend one of the many sessions that you want to at any given time. 
and uh, this year we get them all. Um, what are uh, some of the things, how, how are y'all trying to engage with folks, you know, in this distant format? Uh, I know Keegan and Kate were on the engagement committee last year, and I think Janet and Tina are on the engagement for Accelerate or War recently. So how are you making that transition to digital engagement? Well, I would encourage people to um, participate in the coffee breaks and the networking events and the happy hour of events. Um, I recently was also part of the OLC ID8 event and um, because I'm on the West Coast, it was it ended up being easiest for me to get to the happy hour um, activities every day, but they were so much fun. It was just really a nice chance to decompress and to connect with people. And there were, you know, game formats and storytelling formats and music. And I think, um, you know, that's the part that I think that kind of social connection is what perhaps many of us are most missing in this virtual format. So I would encourage people to look at those engagement opportunities because they, um, while they might be feel like the thing that you could skip, they actually um, are one of the best ways to connect. You know, I'm going to add to that the uniqueness of the virtual format actually, in some ways, inherently um, offers more engagement opportunities, um, specifically about sessions or content. So I've seen, I've been in sessions in my own session that I that I presented where questions are posed and and participants are responding to those questions and sharing strategies and sharing resources and sharing examples and use cases. And I mean, it's kind of like I'm seeing some other domino effects where then there's offshoots here and there. And I, um, in, in a traditional conference session where you're presenting just face to face, that's typically not as common where people are, are almost popcorning in with their, their thoughts and their feedback. And so um, to me, that's actually a very special engagement opportunity because it offers a chance to connect with people's expertise who are in the room, the experts in the room, obviously. And um, so I, I just, I, for me, that's been one of the most value added as well. And Tina, you mentioned earlier that you're able to follow up with people a little bit in a different way than you normally would when you're at a conference and then go back home and sometimes lose those connections. Can you give us any examples of that or any strategies that you're using for sort of immediate follow up? Yeah, just in my own, I can just speak um, pretty much from, my, from now, from my own perspective as a presenter that um, I shared, uh, obviously I shared my contact information in my own session and, and through the chat. And so I've had several people reach out. I, I, I did a session yesterday on the imposter phenomenon. And so people have reached out for more resources and also just to check in and touch base on a couple of questions. Um, and I know that in that session alone that I've been able to actually make other connections. So somebody reached out looking for a specific resource and I was able to connect that person over to somebody else that I knew could, could assist them with what they're asking about. And so, again, a very unique opportunity. Um, you know, I was in a session today and the, and the session um, presenter shared his email as well, but then also I know there was some other sharing going on of, of contact information um, in that session. So that's just from a session perspective, different obviously than some of the engagement pieces that are also going on. And Janet had, re had referenced the Speed Networking Lounge. I don't know if we have a moment that we can just talk about that, just so people know what that is. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was just jumping over to the website so I could. Um, I'm going to drop a link in. So if you're interested in going over and looking about what's going on, it, looking at what's going on in the lounge, you can. Here we go. Um, so we have the uh, field guides and we have the innovation studio and the escape room going on um, in the speed networking lounge. It's, it's interesting that in the last couple of years at both for both of the OLC conferences, there's been more talk about, hey, how do we, how do we level up the OLC live and the virtual attendee experience? And so in a lot of ways we, um, a lot of the sort of big ideas that people had been throwing around on steering committees for the last couple of years really came in handy <laughs> when we had to switch to a virtual format. And we already had a little bit of experience and we already had people who were um, ready to lead in those areas. And so um, going into the, the Speed Networking Lounge is um, a place where I think they have activities, some, some have activities set up. Um, in the schedule, there are um, particular times that you can go in for things like I know I have it on my calendar to do the escape room, which I always seem to miss at the in person event. So I'm excited to actually get to go um, this time because it's super early in the morning for me. Um, 
Keegan or Kate, do you want to speak any more to the Speed Networking Lounge or the other uh, informal gatherings? I was going to jump in just to, um, so one of the things that I think is very fun about just online in general is, you know, we can uh, point people in the direction of resources like that. So I'm going to put in the chat um, the Innovation Studio link to, and they have done a whole website this year for their experience. Um, and I think, you know, thinking about how uh, uh, those kind of physical spaces kind of translate and how you can still interact with both the, 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 the content, but also those people as well, and know who are the minds behind some of those, uh, those big projects. And I think is, I think that's really special. Um, as we're thinking about kind of what conferences can be online, you know, it's, uh, I, I would much rather have knowledge of, you know, the folks that are, that are working on said project um, to then be able to follow up with, like we've been talking about, but, you know, also be able to see where they're coming from and those kinds of aspects too. So um, that's why I wanted to at least throw the Innovation Studio link in there too. Awesome, thank you, Keegan. Um, and thank you, Tina, too, for putting in the direct link to the engagement activities and the, the rooms. Um, John asked in the chat, I've been pretty involved in the um, Serenity Lounge, we've called it Sanctuary. I think that's the name we've settled on for both conferences. So the Sanctuary, which if you've never been to it in person is, is lovely, it's sort of um, spa waiting room-esque where you can go in and, and sort of unplug. Um, especially for the introverts who get, it gets a little overwhelming. Uh, this year, it's a little bit different, of course, um, but we do have the um, live meditation sessions happening uh, several days, uh, two days this week and two days next week um, that you can go and join, uh, 8.15 Eastern time. Um, and to Lisa's comment, thank you um, so much for just letting us know that um, this is a, a format that's working well for you and um, that you're not feeling stressed out about running from room to room. And I think that it, it offers people a high degree of flexibility, right, to be able to um, attend when they can, especially, um, I really appreciate, and I think Christine left, but I, I, I cannot imagine the hours <laughs> that the OLC staff is putting in right now and how mindful they were um, about time zones, which seems like sort of a small and silly thing, but really is not. Like they really tried to stretch things out. Um, Kate alluded to it earlier too, so that it, what, whatever coast you're on or you're in the Midwest, like there's going to be a time where you can attend some of these um, engagement activities. Um, you know, 515 is a little early for me to get to meditation, um, but it's not, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility, even for those of us that are, that are on the Pacific time zone. So um, I've been just incredibly um, grateful that for how hard they have worked to make it accessible to everybody. Ian, uh, what is the uh, game night that you're going to be leading here in a couple nights and how can people join that? Yeah, so one of the engagement activities coming up is we're hosting a game night. If anyone has ever played uh, any of the Jackbox games, those are those are really nice to host uh, over online just because, you know, people can uh, pull out their phones and just go to a website and then participate in the play. Uh, so we'll be doing that soon. Um, let me double check my calendar before I, I want to make sure that I got the, uh, the right, the right time and such on for that. Um, that is next Tuesday, actually at, uh, 8 PM Eastern is when that is. Um, so we'll be hanging out, uh, and, you know, playing games. Last time we did it for ID8 as well. Uh, and it was fun to just, uh, you know, folks shared what books they were reading. We were talking about just random stuff and hanging out. Um, there were onesies involved too. I mean, it was, it was just, it was a good time, you know, <laughs> not, not an, not an everyday, uh, hang out with your, hang out with your colleagues, uh, but a, definitely a fun, uh, day of hanging out with your colleagues. So that's, uh, that's always fun. It's some of my favorite nights. I'll say that. 
getting to work with Keegan, we actually do have nearly daily onesie game nights. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a bit different here. Um, <laughs> just to, uh, we're going to be wrapping up here in a few minutes, but I wanted to give you all one last chance to, to mention any, you know, sessions that you're particularly excited about, uh, whether that's log rolling your own session or, uh, or anything that you're particularly looking forward to that you wanted to note. I'll kick it over to Kate first. Is there uh, one particular session that you're looking forward to most? Uh, I am um, uh, doing a session at a career um, f a roundtable forum on, on Friday with uh, Kate Sanka, Jessica Knott, and Angela Gunder, and the, it's on to PhD or not to PhD, um, which I think is um, for people in this field an interesting question um, for their career um, consideration, so I will plug our Friday afternoon session. Tina, do you want to follow that one up since you've recently made that decision? Yeah, well, I, I actually, um, I'm actually going to put a plug in for uh, a colleague session. She's presenting on the 17th and again on the 26th, two different sessions, but on online science labs. She has taught online science labs for, I think, probably eight to 10 years for our college. And now certainly with the pandemic, the push to take science online. Um, has forced many people to really think about what that looks like, what that means. And so Jennifer Lewis is the presenter and she will certainly um, provide lots of ex um, ideas and strategies and, and evidence-based practice for you to, to learn. Yeah, uh, online science labs and online performative arts are two of the big you know, challenges. I think we can all figure out how sort of online lectures work, but uh, labs and, and you know, ballet, those types of fields are, are particularly challenging. So if you can attend those, uh, please do. Uh, Janet, is there anything that you're, you're really looking forward to? Um, I am really looking forward to engaging with the innovation studio. It's one of those that um, I always want to get to it and never seem to get to engage as much as I want to. So I'm looking forward to that and just want to um, plus one the link that um, Keegan dropped in for the innovation studio, which I am going to put in one more time. Um, please go check out this website and see all the interesting things that um, we're trying to do around innovation, storytelling, um, and just approaching our work in a, in a new and fun way. Thanks. Um, Jim Luke uh, pointed out, you know, there are a lot of first time attendees at OLC, and this is a particularly weird uh, OLC to be a first time attendee too. Um, Keegan, do you know where the roadmaps are if anybody else wants to jump in on those? We do have some some roadmaps to help you sort of find guidance uh, through the, the numerous sessions. Um, and so if you want to both uh, shout out a, a particular session, but then also help Jim out with what should a first time attendee do? Yep, let me get the engagement map link one second. I think there's six people all, all going to get engagement. Yeah, I put right in now. the link to the um, the engagement, the field guide program, and the which has the links to all the engagement maps. Um, and one of the engagement maps is about around new to online learning. Um, so those are really great resources, and I find them, you know, even as a you know a regular attendee at OLC to be really helpful because there's just so much content that the engagement maps are a nice way to um, to help kind of navigate the program. Yeah, it's a nice collection of sessions and things that are either around one idea or whatever it is. Um, so it's it's a great place to start, I would say. If I could just jump in quickly too. Um, so yesterday on Monday, and then also next week Monday on the twenty second. There are the field guide power hours, which are essentially um, for new attendees and it helps you kind of navigate the conference experience. Um, I'll see if I can drop that um, information into the chat, but I would encourage folks to check that out as well. Um, also, if you're on the Slack channel, um, Rolando, who's leading our field guides is on there and very active. And um, any of us actually on the conference committee as well would be more than happy um, to, to touch base with anybody. And so um, I, I appreciate that feedback. Um, I've copied that out of the chat because I think that um, on our behalf and certainly from OLC, we, we'd like to act on that in some way for the next time we have a virtual conference for new attendees. So thank you for having the courage to share. We do appreciate that. Yeah, I think Jim will be happy to, to reach out to a lot of us. I think he knows most of us here anyway. So um, we are at time. And so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up and hand it back over to Cindy, but thank you all for joining us uh, today. And I'm glad you got to meet our chairs for this year's OLC. 
and uh, please do reach out to any and all of us uh, if you'd like any help or any directions or just uh, want to chat. Thanks, everybody. Um, John, you led a great team and a great discussion, and I, I think that it was helpful for all of us to hear the behind the scenes work that went into this. Um, I just want to remind folks to go ahead and fill out the program uh, session evaluations that can be found um, directly next to the link or right below the link where you actually logged on to the Zoom room. And uh, remind you that we have the uh, OLC conference that was mentioned in the fall in November. I guess it sounds like it remains to be seen whether that's going to be virtual or on the ground yet. But if you have the opportunity to attend in, in Orlando, it's a great experience. I highly recommend it to everyone. Um, Amy, any other announcements? You covered it, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. And yes, like you said, especially Jim, anyone who's new here, um, please provide that feedback on your session evaluation or at your um, at the end of the conference, you'll receive a survey as well. And we'd like to we, we do read those. We would like to get that information and, and improve it for next year or the next time we're virtual. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya.